I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and I'm just in the process of taking this net off my apple tree. It's a fruit fly net so it's not just to stop the birds from eating the apples but it's mainly actually to prevent fruit fly from stinging the apples and then filling the fruit full of maggots so we get none. I've been conducting this little experiment for the last two years now. This year we've had a fair bit of fruit set on the tree. It hasn't all gone great. There's, there's a few issues and I'll tell you that back, about that in a second. The other tree behind me, the smaller one, over my right shoulder, that's a Tropic Anna. So it's a variety of Anna apple, which is the nice red one that you get. Uh, historically a cooler climate tree, of course. Um, but this variety sets in the subtropics and it's, uh, it's a lovely apple. The only thing is we didn't get any fruit off it this year because we, fr we netted the Golden Dorset. These are both dwarfs. We netted the golden dwarf, dorset, but we didn't net the, the, the Anne. And unfortunately, the fruit that did set on the, on the Tropic Anna didn't develop. I mean, it got to just about ripe, and then fruit flies stung the hell out of it, and they just got filled with maggots and fell off the tree. Uh, only good for compost, really, or given to the chickens. Whereas, at least with the fruit fly net over the Golden Dorset, we've got a crop this season. and We've been eating, you know, probably a dozen or so off it already. I guess we had about 50 fruits set on that small tree, which was fantastic. Really beautiful crisp apples. Lovely taste. So much different. I mean, you know, look, I have to say, I've got a bit of a gripe against shop-bought apples at the moment. My boys, I mean, my kids, they've resorted to eating Granny Smith apples because at least they've got a bit of tang and a bit of bite about them, you know. Whereas the red apples you get these days, they, you bite into them, they're crisp, they're kept in cold storage, true. You know, they, they, they have the right texture in that, but they just don't taste the way an apple should. They're bland, they're, they've just got nothing. You know, it just annoys me. So that's why we try to grow our own apples here, even though we're in a warm climate where we probably shouldn't be able to grow apples. But because of technology and crossbreeding, you can get these beautiful apple trees. And, uh, you know, grow your own apples. The only problem is, of course, in my area, is the damn fruit flies. Our birds love them too, as they're starting to ripe, but fruit flies are the worst because they just sting the fruit. One, you only need one sting, one grub, to go straight into the center of the apple and then it's gone. But with this net, we've been able to get a good crop of apples out of it. And so I'm really wrapped. Um, like I said, though, it hasn't all gone to plan. You, the problems I'm finding with the net is the inconvenience of it. You've got to try to get in. This has got a flap, which is great, um, to be able to get in and pick some apples, but you can't get to all the apples. The other thing is you get foliage that grows through the net, and uh, you know, even in the short time you have, if you, if you net it after flowering, um, you're still going to get foliage and, and growth get through that net. And also, just the, the net rubbing on the, on the branches can open up uh, holes in the wind where you get some good storms here at this time of year and those holes then can let insects and fruit fly in particular through. Thankfully not all the fruit got stung. We might have got, you know, I don't know, some fruit fly through that's ruined some of the fruit but not all of it. So mind this kookaburra at the moment. He's just sitting up in the gum tree there. So it hasn't ruined all the fruit, so that's, that's been good. The fruit fly net has done the job, I guess that's the main thing. I prefer to, to net the whole tree. I think in the future what I might do is prune that right back and then put a frame over the tree and then the net. So that hopefully will make it, A, keep the fruit off the net so the fruit fly can't sting through it and also B, stop the branches from rubbing on the net and breaking holes in it. All right, well, I'm really happy with that harvest. I don't know how many we've got, but it's a fair number. I reckon it's at least about eight kilos or so. Oh, just dropped one. I have to eat that now. May I present to you the Golden Dorset. What I want to do now is just give you a taste test. Um, or well, I'll taste test for you and uh, just show you uh, just a few different points on, you know, homegrown apples. 
So you've got this rife spot. I can see that this probably isn't fruit fly. This is just a spot. And I can see that if it was fruit fly, it certainly didn't get to the core and it never developed. So it was probably just a, a rot spot. Regardless, I can still eat this. I can still eat the rest of it or we can make an apple pie out of it, apple sauce, all these fantastic things you can do with a, a glut of apples. Okay, I'll have a taste of it. Tastes as good as any apple you'll buy, I tell you. The harvest, some of them green, just couldn't leave them on the tree. So let's have a taste of the green ones. Well, they're nearly, they're starting to turn, but they're still green. They're crisp and juicy, and you know what? They're not unpleasant at all. And here we have a nice big ripe golden dorset. See the golden glow about it? Some of them there have got that red tinge through it. But this is the real golden type. Cuts in, cuts through nice and easy. Flesh is really firm. And remember this is, I'm growing this in the subtropics here. This isn't a, this isn't a cold climate. This one's starting to get a little bit overripe, so it's not as crisp, but it's um, it's it's almost like a, a pear flavour. Very sweet. I mean, I'm wrapped that here I am in the subtropics, harvesting 10 kilos of of apples in a fruit fly zone. This is just wonderful. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And also the website, selfsufficientme.com, if you want to have a look at some of my written work. Bye for now.